Uh, this boy definitely needs to be fixed soon. We'll get there. So someone left their window visor in the middle of the road. That's kind of funny. But today we are going to be working on the EXA. So let's get this started. Hello everyone. It's JD here and today we are in the EXA, the A86 from Wish. And today's goal for this video is to actually get some of the main issues fixed. The issue that we're having at the moment, which is super crucial, is a cold start issue where basically the car won't start or idle properly on cold. So it'll just kind of go up to maybe 600 RPM and then it'll just kind of drop and it'll do that until the engine picks up revs and gets warm and yeah, it's annoying. I don't think it's very healthy for the engine, so we're going to try and diagnose it. So, as you guys know, I bought the A86 from Wish, also known as the KCN13 Nissan Exa. This is practically a retro body Pulsar that was made around the 80s, and this car is pretty cool. It is a shitbox. I got it for about $1,000. It's manual as well, which is pretty mint, which means I get to drive manual. And I got a video of that actually, if you guys want to see. Apart from some of the major issues with it starting, I also have to keep topping up the clutch fluid every now and then because there's a clutch leak. So this thing is kind of uh, in need of TLC. And apart from that, also the fuel gauge also doesn't work. So I've got to fix that as well. But I will show you quickly the issue that I'm having. So we are going to turn the car on. Does it have power? It has power. We have the car in neutral. I'll just have to make sure, neutral, we have the foot on the clutch, and start. And it just conks out like that. See, and it just keeps going back down, and it'll do this for a while until it heats up. There we go. And then the revs drop, and it just conks. All right, we are in the skyline. This car has been neglected for quite a while. I still got to take it in to get it serviced because it's actually right on the sticker right there. It has a transmission issue I still got to fix. So that's something that is coming up. It still turns on, it idles pretty well on a cold start. And now let's make sure as soon as I put this in, it's in first gear, that means the transmission's still working. I'm gonna let the car heat up a bit and then we are going to head out to Autobahn. So practically when we get home, I'm gonna be taking the air filter off, I'm gonna be taking the mass airflow sensor out, cleaning that sensor and then putting it all back in. If that all doesn't work, my backup plan is to adjust the throttle position sensor or the TPS and I will try and maybe get that to a little bit higher than what it is on idle. But if that doesn't fix it as well, I'm gonna have to figure out how I'm going to attack this and get it to work properly. 
But for now, we're gonna cruise back home. I'm going to get started and you guys are gonna see my troubleshooting journey for this issue. Okay guys, so I forgot to actually click record when I was showing you guys what we needed to do. So I'm going to just recreate that right here. Oh, there we go. Got it. Pretty much what we are fixing today is we are replacing this filter. We are gonna be taking out the mass airflow sensor. We're gonna be cleaning that sensor. And then later down the track, I'm going to be putting some of the Nulon injector cleaner into the fuel tank before I fill up the tank pretty much. And then once that's done, hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll fix it. If not, the next step is to actually angle this TPS sensor, which I believe this is where it is. And I gotta make sure that it is on correctly and that it is secured down because hopefully that'll actually fix the issue anyway i'll go get my tools and we're going to get right into this we're first going to take off this air filter and then we'll get to the math sensor next ah almost got it okay you know what this might be loose enough to actually take this off okay maybe i can just wiggle this off Come on. All right, guys, let's get the sensor off and let's get it cleaned. How the hell do you actually remove this thing? <laughs> okay, this is like loose. What the hell is going on here? That's already loose. I think we can probably get this out already. Oh, there we go. So this is practically what we're doing today. We have our math cleaner by Liquimoly, which is basically an airflow sensor cleaner. And we have our math airflow sensor here, which I'm going to be taking apart and we're gonna basically be cleaning it. I don't know where I should be putting the cleaner in, but from the looks of it, it looks pretty dirty. I have a feeling this is going to need a very thorough clean and I don't know if it's safe to use water in it to clean it and then just dry it out but I'm just going to be safe to use the cleaner and maybe a cloth so we're going to get that all sorted and then I'm going to put the new air filter on and that should be the end of that. Yeah here we go. should hopefully fix it. So my phone got full, so it actually didn't show you all the processes, but practically I've been spraying math cleaner into this just to clean it out. But as you can kind of see, it's looking a lot better. It was actually like pretty dirty before, but now it's clean enough that it's probably going to help to fix some of the issue. So now I'm going to reinstall this and I'm going to put a new filter on it just to get some clean air going through. Because as you can see here, I think this was a fairly good filter, but like, there's a crack right here, which probably wasn't even fixed properly. And also this filter bit is really coming loose. So I don't know if this filter is even doing the job properly, but we're going to make sure that this new filter is actually gonna fix the issue. And fingers crossed, it will actually work. Now, will this fit as is? Cause, okay, still a bit small. So I gotta take this rubber bit off. Or maybe I can just stretch it. Oh, okay, we got this. This might fix it. Oh, come on. Ah. Ah, shit. So it's a little bit jank, but I managed to get the K&N filter on somehow. So props to me for just shoving it in there. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't fall out and I'll have to let you guys know if the filter does somehow have issues, but we will see. For now, it's a good fit and it actually looks so much better now on the car. Matches the rocker cover perfectly. So yeah, that's the K&N filter on. Now that's all done, part I've been waiting for. Will this actually fix the issue? Key in the ignition. Get ready. Let's see, here we go. Ah, it didn't fix it. Let's just have it in neutral. Oh, wait.
Wait, what the hell? Okay, second start. So maybe that's sort of contributed. I took my foot off the clutch. It's dropping a little bit. It's very rough idle. Oh, yep, it's kind of sputtering a little bit. But yeah, it's idling very low, literally under 500 RPM. So not good, but maybe TPS could have something to do with it. I'm not too sure. Practically verdict for today, filter didn't really work. All that we really did was change something that needed to be changed anyway and clean a filter, which definitely needed it. The next thing that I need to check is, also just removing this piece of thing. That's definitely not the issue. I wish it was though. Um, practically TPS sensor or even throttle body might need to be fixed. Um, it could just be cleaning related or it could also just be that it's not aligned properly. But from the sounds of it, it sounds like when it's trying to fire on all cylinders, it's just not doing it. So another thing I'm going to check out is going to be my spark plugs. So that's going to be something for another time. So for now, I'm just going to give it a rest because there's not really much we can do. But we do know what the next step is for the EXA. We need to get new spark plugs. We also need to check off the list of things that could be going wrong. The diagnosis is as soon as you put throttle on it on a cold start, the engine just clocks out, just cannot handle throttle on cold. Even when it does handle throttle, what ends up happening is pretty much, it just kind of limps, like it barely even holds power. And as soon as the engine heats up, it starts to work normally. So I don't know what it could be. It could be the oils, it could be the coolant. It could mainly be something spark related because there is a small misfire on coals. Maybe even getting the timing belt or even throttle body adjusted could also help. Maybe getting a bit higher revs on coals could probably assist with the issue, but we don't know yet. We're going to figure that out very soon. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching this short video on the diagnosis of this issue. If you liked it, please leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with the Exa build, please subscribe. There's going to be plenty of videos of us trying to get this little nugget running properly. Anyway, see you guys later.